power to redeem, Father, power to heal, power to cover us this morning. And so we thank you this morning. Your blood never loses its power. And we thank you this morning, God, that you shed your blood for us. We thank you, God, for another time to come into your house. God, where we can come and worship you. Lift up holy hands, Father, in praise and adoration. Lifting up our voices to you this morning. God, accept our praise this morning. Yes, Lord. Let it come up to you, God, as a sweet smell and savor. Yes, so many are sick among us this morning. Yes, we pray, mighty God, that you just stretch your hands towards them, Father, yes, Lord. and cause them to be healed this morning. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes, name of Jesus. Many are still mourning among us, Lord, Jesus. for the loss of loved ones, God, yes, who has transitioned this life. Comfort them, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for this awesome privilege that you've given us. Another time to come into your house. Thank you for your presence that is here with us. We pray, mighty God, that you move among your people today. Be free, Holy Spirit, God. Touch every heart this morning. Touch every mind. Remove any distraction, Father, that will cause us not to hear your word this morning. We may be listening, but we may not hear. So we ask you, God, to remove those things from us, Lord, that will cause us not to hear you this morning. Touch us, Father. Touch your man servant this morning yes, that is here to minister your word. Yes, Let it touch our hearts this morning, God. Yes, we can uh, apply to our lives today, God. Yes, we thank you, God, for he being here with us. Yes, Let us be careful to give you all the glory, Hallelujah. all the praise, yes, and all the honor that is due only unto you today. Yes, we commit ourselves to you today yes, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may take your seats. I'm just going to read a couple of reminders and announcements in your hearing today. Coming up this Friday, the 24th at 7 p.m., we will gather here in person at 7 p.m. PM, as I said before, for our prayer service and also for youth meeting. Amen? Amen. So prayer will be held up here in the sanctuary and youth meeting will be downstairs at 7 p.m. So young people, invite your friends, invite your neighbors, and come and have fellowship one with another. Amen. 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 We're open to see you all here on Friday at 7 p.m. On Saturday the 25th will be our women's meeting. It will be a time of fun and fellowship. That will Amen. also be here between the hours of 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Amen? Amen. 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 So call in all ladies. We are hoping to see you on Saturday at 10 a.m. March 11th, the state of New Jersey will be having a girls event, young ladies event, which will be from 2 to 5 p.m. It will be at 400 Hamilton Avenue in Trenton, New Jersey. Young ladies, if you wish to attend, please see me for additional details. Amen. On the 25th, we would like to visit or support our sister church, which is Mount Bethel Church of God in Trenton, New Jersey. The women's ministry will be having their women's convention. Amen. It will be on March 12th at, they're having it in the morning at 10 a.m., but we will like to go to their evening service at 5.30 p.m. That's in Trenton, New Jersey at 491 Bellevue Avenue. Amen? Amen. And also in March, on the 25th, 
our other sister church, which is Word of God World Ministries, where Reverend Hortense Cardi is the senior pastor there. She will be having a revival. Um, it will be on March 25th at 7 p.m. and also on the 26th at 10 and 6 p.m. Amen. Of course, at 10 a.m. we'll be here for our services. So if you are able to attend on the 25th at 7 p.m. and you would like to go on the 26th, which is Sunday evening at 6 p.m. Amen. 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 Those are the announcements that we have for the rest of February and also for March. Mark your calendars. We understand if you can't go to everything, but we'd like to go and support our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we just lift up a praise yes. unto the Lord today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are here today because God has been good. A songwriter says, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus, you are the center. Hallelujah. And he should be the center of our lives. He should be the center of it all. So we just bless the name of Jesus today for his goodness towards us. Every third Saturday of the month, we have a uh, food giveaway or outreach to the community. And yesterday, of course, was the third Saturday. And we were able to bless the families that came through yesterday. Uh, we were able to give away everything that we had prepared yesterday. And we just want to say thank you so much um, to our personnel who are in charge for our food giveaway. Those who have donated, hallelujah. We can give the Lord a hand for that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because you have, you have given of your resources, your time, your finances, and the Lord has use that to bless families who are in need who are going through and so the book of Matthew chapter 25 verse 31 through 40 says Jesus said when I was hungry you fed me when I was thirsty you gave me drink when I was naked you clothed me when I was sick or in prison you came and visited me and so that's what we're doing and the folks said we never saw you hungry or thirsty but you know, sometimes we have an image of God. Yeah. And because that image does not of God doesn't fit our perception of who he is, when he shows up in other ways, we don't see him. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody missed that. When he shows up in other ways, we don't yeah. see him. Yeah. And Jesus, looked, he responded to them by saying, as much as you have done it to the least of these, yeah. you have done it unto me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so... Every time you give, he said, if you give a cup of water in my name, it's to the glory and to the kingdom of God Hallelujah. and to glorify my father. And so every time we give, every time we bless someone, every time we pour out, whether it's in service or it's in, in the goods or, or kind, then we are able to give it on, unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we just want to say thank you so much for your giving. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your preparation. And thank you to all those who are involved. Uh, our sister event is uh, over our outreach, and she does a wonderful job. And we want to thank God for, you know, just her time and what she does and what she pours in. And we, you know, we want to appreciate the folks that do the things that they do in the ministry as they go forward. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. This month is Black History Month, and we take time out to recognize and to honor those who have paved the way for uh, black history and civil rights and so on. And this has not only been celebrated here in the United States, but globally it's been celebrated in different countries and different areas. And so two of our young ladies today, they're going to come and they're going to do a presentation every Sunday in the month of February. What we try to do is to honor and to recognize and you know when all the things come up we do try to honor and recognize those also and we're going to ask them to come right at this time 
because I did going to do your presentation for Black History for us. Can we just Amen. give him a hand, Amen. Sister Unique yes. and Sister Gabrielle, Gabby, come Amen. Very important in our history. 
and to know that they were able to share a quality of education that was being offered in schools at the time, to know that our young men could break barriers to be in the military to fight for our freedom. Yeah. Memorial Day is yeah. coming up, uh, Veterans Day is down the road also, and when we look at the freedom that we enjoy, we can truly say that we thank God that they have been a part thank of God. that. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The song that was for our praise and worship this morning, this simply talks about from our heart to the heavens, Jesus is a center and that everything in our life should be all about him. And so as we prepare to give to the Lord today, whatever you're offering to God, Know that everything that you give is about him. Everything you get is from him. Amen. There's a song that says that it starts with Jesus and it ends with him. Amen. 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 Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. And I, I, I said in Sunday school this morning that the incense that should arise from us should be our worship and should be our praise. Yeah. We don't burn incense in the temple anymore. We don't have to do that because Jesus has gone to the cross. He has torn the veil of the temple. He has exposed everything and we're able to go freely into the Holy of Holies. We're able to go freely to the throne of grace and to bless the name of Jesus. Amen. And so the incense that we need to offer to God or to give to him, it's our worship and our praise. Can you stand Amen. with me this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. As our ushers prepare themselves this morning, I just wanted to hold your offering in your hands like this to present it to the Lord. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and I want to read this in your hearing this morning. Verse 6 says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you have an all sufficiency. God will make sure that you have enough. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of the, uh, the Shunammite woman when the prophet went to her house and asked her to bake him a meal, a cake. All she had was a last amount of flour, last amount of oil, and the Bible says she must have think. I'm sure for us, if, if the pastor or the bishop or you know the reverend came and said, "Listen, I'm hungry. Can you just make me a meal?" And all you have in your cupboard is a can of tuna and two slices of bread that's left, and you have your kids with you. You must think that this preacher has lost his mind <laughs> to ask you for the last of it. But the Bible says that she gave him the cake in faith believe in the man of God and the Bible said that every time she went back to the barrel mm -hmm. there was just enough all sufficiency for her and her son and that's what the word of God is saying today in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 God is able to make all grace abound towards you Amen. that you always have an all sufficiency mm -hmm. and not just some things but the scripture says, in all things, may you have an abundance for every good work. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. I don't know what you need from God today. I don't know what you desire. But when we present this offering and our tithe to the Lord, it is not because we just need the bigger house or we need the new car or we need the promotion on the job. But it just may be healing in your body. It may be healing in your family. It may be that someone you know needs to get saved. And you are put presenting this offering as a seed for salvation. 
you're presenting this offering. You're, you're sowing as a seed for deliverance Amen. from something. Amen? Amen. Because I, I, I just want to take a little time with this if you'll oblige me this, this morning. Many times we look at it to say, you know, when we present our offering to the Lord, we're looking for the blessing because Malachi chapter 3 tells us that we should take the offering and the tithe into the, into the house of the Lord. And we should prove God now and see if he won't pour us out a blessing that we won't have room enough to receive. And the blessing that we look at at all times, many people look at it as money. Many people look at it as materialistic things. But do we know that God wants to bless us above and beyond that? Amen. Do we know that God wants to make sure our bodies are healthy? Yes. Do we know that God wants to make sure our families are united? Yes. Do we want, know that God wants to make sure that salvation comes to our house? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so as we present this to the Lord this morning, we believe in God that he will grant us the grace and the favor to have all sufficiency for all things in abundance. Yes, Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we come before you this morning. And as we present our offering, it's an act of worship. It's an act of praise and adoration to you. And God, as we present our offering and tithe before you, God, you see every need in this house. You know what your people desire. You know what's lacking in our lives. And we stand upon your word today. That simply tells us, God, that you shall supply all our needs according to your riches that is in glory. And we stand upon this word today as Paul wrote to the Corinthians. God, that you will speak in our ear in today. That simply says, your grace is to make all sufficiency towards us. And that we may abound in all good works. So we will not lack. We will not suffer. And we stand with the word in the book of Psalm that tells us that I have been young and now I'm yet old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed begging bread. And this morning, God, we pray that you will accept our worship. Just as though we ask you to accept when we say praise the Lord and lift our hands and open our lips. Accept this offering of praise. Accept this tithe, God, that it will be presentable before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Hallelujah. For those who want to partner with us and to give online, uh, you can simply do so through our cash app. It's dollar sign Ebenezer FWCCOG. That's dollar sign Ebenezer FWCCOG. And also for those who just want to write a check, you can make it out to Ebenezer Family Worship Center, Church of God. And you can mail that to 90, that's 90 Beach Nut Court, B-E-E-C-H-N-U-T Court. It's Lumberton, New Jersey, 08048. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We give God glory today for who he is because he is the everlasting God. And we magnify his name. You know, in the midst of so much bad news that we are hearing all over the country, when you turn the news on, you see so many bad things that is happening. And it's like the news desires or the news media desires to bring forth the bad things. Because it sells. It's what attracts the viewers. It's what attracts, you know, more people to them. But there is something that's going on in our midst. And I want to just share it a little bit, and then I'm going to ask our Pastor Winston Ennis to come and to pray that God will extend this to this Northeast and extend it to the state of New Jersey and Boston and extend it to New York and Pennsylvania and Delaware uh, and Rhode Island. At Asbury University in Kentucky, they had a chapel service. And the last chapel service they had, they were studying the book of Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through to about verse 15. And after that, a revival broke out at a university where the students, the young people at the university are currently in revival from a, for about a week now, about seven, eight days, 10 days, thank you. 10 days, they have to be in the chapel seeking God, seeking his face, just pouring out to him, just asking God to bless. 
And not only that, there are miracles that are happening in the midst of them. People have gone there and they have, they have been healed from sicknesses and diseases. And then, it's like the Holy Spirit wasn't even satisfied with just staying in Asbury. Church of God in which we fall under has a university called Lee University in Cleveland, Tennessee. And the revival has spread over to Lee University. The students have been in the chapel for the last nine or so days at Lee University. And these young people are in the chapel. They're outside the chapel. They're on the school grounds. And just the Spirit of God is moving in a magnificent way. They are crying before the Lord. They are pouring out before God. And they are in prayer before God. Day and night. All throughout the day. All throughout the night. For the last nine and ten days. I want to tell you something this morning Ebenezer. God is doing something amongst us. And whatever he's doing in this season. I don't want him to do it without me. I don't want him to do it without us. Hallelujah. Whatever he's doing in this season, we want to be a part of that. Amen. I, I want to ask Pastor if he would just come. And as he comes to pray for us this morning, I'm going to ask you to stand on your feet one more time. Rest on your feet. And this morning while Pastor is praying, I'm going to ask you to just open your hearts. Re remove your seatbelt. Every restriction this morning. Align your heart. Hallelujah. Towards heaven. So that God could pour in, he can pour out so that you can be blessed this morning. Amen. Whatever is happening at Asbury yes, and at right. Lee, we want to be a part of that. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we come before you this morning. God, heartaches, broken people. Broken pieces, Lord. That is why you came and died on Calvary. And your touch, Lord, is all that we long for. For you have given life to us. And so, Father, as we approach your mercy seat today, I want to thank you, God, for this great opportunity that you have given to us, uh, that we can come to you crying, Abba, Father. Yes, God, as you send the wind out of your treasure and it blows from the east to the west, the north and the south, and we feel the, the wind as it move across and touch our body. Yes, then we pray today, God, as we hear of the revival yes. that is moving through the land. Yes. Oh, God, the earth is yours, God, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. What you do, God, in one area, you can do it in another. And so, Father, we recognize in time past, even before we were born, God, we heard of the revival that was broken out in Wales. We heard of the Azusa Street revival. We heard of the many times, God, of heaven even before we come into existence you move in troubled times when things seem as it would not to be what it ought to be you move upon the lives of men and women you turn lives around you transform lives you heal sick my God you touch life that were broken and wounded you brought them into existence God and you bring them from one state to another another that they could worship and praise you you are the same God then and you are the same God today we understood by your word you do not slumber you do not sleep God you see every avenue you see people in the east you see them in the west the north the south you see them in the universities you see them in their homes you see them in the streets you see them as they drive their car. You see them as they move into your sanctuary. Almighty God, nothing is hid from you. And so today, Father, we pray for a move of your spirit. God, in every area, in every nation, in every tongue, in every language. God, we yearn for your spirit to move and bring a change into the lives of human beings. Wounded lives are why you came and died on Calvary. And 
and so today, Father, we pray for refreshing of your spirit, God, to rock upon the lives of men and women, to transform lives, God. We have seen and we have heard the many disasters that are going through the nation today. The enemy is out like a roaring lion. He's taking lives, my God, young innocent lives, adults, God of heaven, and it would seem as if you do not see, but you do not slumber, God. You do not sleep, and you said, me not always to pray and not to faint. And so this day, God, we pray for a revival. We pray for a fresh touch. We pray for a move of your spirit in every area, God, in every city's father. We look to you, God. We have heard that men and women, boys and girls, are seeking your face. And you said in your word, if your people which are called by your name would humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, God, you will hear from heaven. You will heal the land. If there's never a time our land needs to be healed, is now, God. We need healing mentally. We need healing spiritually. We need healing physically. And so today, God, we pray for your power to move through the land, to touch lives, God. Bring them from death to life again. Transform lives, my God. I pray today, Father, that you will have your own way. Oh, Father, for you see all things. You hear all things. You know all things. You are the creator. You are the redeemer. You are the I am that I am. You are the mighty God. You are the everlasting Father. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the Holy One of Israel. You see and you know God. And so we are asking you today for a fresh move. We are asking you today for a fresh anointing. We are asking you today, God, that you will touch lives, raise and renew, renew lives, uplift lives today. Oh God of heaven, we are asking you today, Father, that you will do for us what no other can do. For you are the almighty God, which changeth not. We are praying today, God, for we believe to see your goodness right here while we are alive in the land of the living. And so, Father, we are asking you that you will touch your eyes, that you will heal, that you will deliver, that you will make you again. We will not fail to give you the honor and the glory that you want to you. We pray today, God, that as you send the rain and it comes down and water the ground, oh God, the plant bring forth, bud and bring forth fruit, that I pray that your spirit will water us today. We pray that your spirit will move and touch lives today, transform lives, and oh God, give life, for you are the life giver. It is not in your power, and it is not your will to take life, but it's in your power to give life, and give life more abundantly. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, we look to you today, oh God, that you will touch that one today that is in their home that give up on life oh God I pray today that you will turn that life around that one that is seeking your face for a turn oh God I pray that you will visit that woman that one that is crying out to you this morning that it seems like there is no way out for that one let them know that you are the way, God. You are the truth and you are the life. They can come to you, Father, and find rest for their soul. They can come to you today and find peace in the time of storm. Oh, God, storm clouds seem to be rising in the midst of a people. But you are the woman that can come in the storm. You are the one, God, that can turn lives around. You are 
glory to the name of the Lord this morning. I feel like the water is so troubled this morning. I feel like there is just an atmosphere of praise in this house. Hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. If, if you need something from God today, if you came in with a burden, if you came in with a need this morning, we want to open the altar to you right now. We don't, we don't have to wait till the end of a service, but if you have a need this morning, hallelujah, we want to open this altar to you if you will just come that we can pray. If you will just come, that we can claim it this morning. If you will just come so that we can pull down whatever it is that the enemy wants to uphold you with this morning. If you will just come so that we can present it to the Lord. If you have a need this morning, if it's a need for breakthrough, if it's a need for deliverance, if it's a need where you're just seeking God for something, if it's a need for healing this morning, this altar is open and you can walk right here so that we can just start praying with you. We can start praying for you and we are going to believe God that God has manifested his power in your life. He has manifested his grace and we're going to believe God on your behalf this morning. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, glory to the name of the Lord. I feel the presence of the power of the Lord in this place. Hallelujah, God. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're just watching or listening, if you want to just point your hand toward the screen or just rest your hand toward the phone, if you want to come this morning, we want to pray for you and we want to pray with you. Hallelujah, God. Father, we bless your name this morning. God, we've already put the needs in your hands. And Father, as we come before you, Lord, we are rejoicing this morning. And we're giving you thanks in advance for what you have already done. We're giving you thanks in advance for the healing that has taken place. We're giving you thanks in advance this morning, God, for the breakthrough, oh God, for shattering the chains, for destroying the yokes, God, of bondage. God, we're giving you thanks this morning, Father, for deliverance, God, for the things that have held us down and held us back and wouldn't allow us to walk into our destiny, wouldn't allow us to walk forward into what you have called us to. We're giving you thanks this morning, God, that every stronghold that seemed to want to take a hold on us, we have already pulled down, Father, and we have trampled on them, and we are thanking you for the triumph and for the victory that you have given unto us in the name of Jesus. We are giving you thanks this morning, God, and we are giving you praise, Father, for manifesting your power and your glory in this house and in the lives of your people this morning. God, we thank you for breakthrough. We thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance this morning. And we thank you for salvation and for the power of your spirit this morning, God, that has moved amongst us in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to the name of the Lord. Can we just bless God this morning? Can we bless him today? Can we bless him at this moment? Hallelujah. Oh, glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to the name of Jesus. Oh, there's a sweet spirit in this place today. And I know that there's the spirit of the Lord. There's a sweet anointing in this place today. And I know that there's the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost among us this morning. Hallelujah, God. God, we bless you today. Will we magnify your name today, God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Can we just wave our hands to heaven today? Can we just wave our hands to heaven, God? Hallelujah. We wave it back to you, Lord. Hallelujah. We wave the banner of praise. We wave the banner of worship. We wave the banner this morning of gratitude, God. Hallelujah. Because we're thankful. Oh, glory to the name of Jesus. We're thankful, God. We're thankful, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we thank you this morning. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. 
Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. From our hearts to the heavens. Oh, hallelujah. From our hearts to the heavens. Hallelujah. There's something about worship. It's a love language of God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. It's a love language of God. Hallelujah. This afternoon as we worship him, we're believing that we are pleasing in his sight. Hallelujah. He said those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Oh, glory to the name of Jesus. And this afternoon, we bless his name because he's worthy. Hallelujah. The psalmist says, clap your hands, all ye people. Oh, he said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Hallelujah. And we are excited to be in the presence of the Lord today. Oh, glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to read the portion of God's holy word this morning as we look to him for a word. Hallelujah. The book of Psalm 40. The 40th Psalm. It's a Psalm of David. He was going through a time of trial. He was going through a time where Saul was on his heels and was trying to kill him. He was going through a time where he had, he didn't have a dwelling place, but he had to run from place to place, just hiding in caves and in mountains. Hallelujah. How many of us have been at that place in our lives where we feel like we're just hiding? We feel like we're running from circumstances. We feel like we're running from life itself. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You don't have to stand. I'm just going to read it if you can find it today. I'm reading from the King, New King James Virgin. The 40th Psalm. And I'm reading from verse 1 to the appointed verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 1 simply says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it in fear, and will trust in the Lord. Verse 4 says, blessed is that man who makes the Lord his trust. And does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. And I'm going to stop here at verse 6. Verse 5 says, Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done. And your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. And verse 6, and last says, Sacrifice of offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. This is the word of the Lord. We honor it by saying, Amen. 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 Father, as we come before you today, we pray, Father God, that I will decrease and disappear. And that just as an oracle of you, that you will speak through me to us, your people today. And Father, at the end of the day, we will be edified leaving here. We will be blessed leaving here. God, let no flesh be glorified in your presence. But at the end of today, God, and even now, let all praise, let all honor, let all glory be given unto you. And that you be exalted, not only in this house, but in the lives of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we just clap our hands for the Lord yeah. this afternoon? Can we just give him a praise this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. Because he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. I want to talk to us today on a simple topic that says, God hears your cry. God hears your cry. Can you just turn to your neighbor real quick and say to him or her, God hears your cry. God hears your cry. The thing 
about crime is that crime can be contextualized in different categories or depending on what your situation is. And so many times a cry is not necessarily tears running down our cheeks coming from our tear ducts that God created. Sometimes we are crying because we are excited about a thing. Sometimes the cries or the tears that we have are not necessarily tears of despair or anger. They're not necessarily tears that are of desperation, disappointment, and sorrow. But sometimes it's tears of joy while we are crying. When we cry unto God, sometimes we make a sound when we're mourning and people indicate to us that truly based on our conduct or the sound or expression that we are crying for something. Yeah. And sometimes when we're crying, there are no tears that are running down our faces, but it's in the heart that is so broken that we can literally feel the dripping and the dropping of tears right. on the inside as we cry out to God. One of the measures to make sure that a baby is okay, and mothers can attest to that, is that when a baby is born, what the doctors want to hear are not only just their breathing, but they want to hear them cry. There ought to be a sound, and in most cases, if the baby doesn't cry, the doctors slap them or pat them a little bit just to hear a cry coming out of them. Because crying expresses that there is some form of volume, some form of recharge coming through their lungs. There is it's something in their airwaves that's coming out on the outside. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord hears your cry. All right. Kirk Franklin wrote a song called Why We Sing. And in the song that was written about two decades ago, he simply says that sometimes we may be crying and you may ask the reason why. People have different emotions that evoke tears out of their tear ducts. And so many times when people are crying, sometimes you're not even going through anything, but the tear ducts are so overloaded and the, the, opt the opticians will tell you that that it just starts overflowing and it runs out. Sometimes something may catch in your eyes. It could be your eyelids. And you start scratching or rubbing your eyes or the retina of your eye. And it begins to fill up with tears. And people think that you're crying. I want to talk about the cry that God hears today because while we cry for various things, you see some people cry because they want material things. They want, want, want. Some people cry because they are crying because they have tried so hard in life, but it seems like every time they move forward, there are obstacles in their way, and they feel disappointed because of the thing, the effort they have put forward, so they become sorrowful in that respect. But I want to talk to us today about the cry of one of the famous men of the Bible, and his name was David. He was a second king of Israel, God's chosen people. He was a king that was chosen by God. It is out of David's lineage or lineage or heritage or loins that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, came. It is through David whom the line of a tribe of Judah emerged and came forth victorious and triumphant. It is David who wanted to build a house unto God that when God said, you can't build a house for me because there's too much blood on your hands. Even though David was called a man of war, David was what we call God's battle axe because God used David to defeat the Philistines and so many of the enemies of Israel throughout his reign and his time. It was David who was called a man after God's own heart. And many people have questioned that, well, he committed murder, premeditated, he committed adultery, he did different things. How can he be a man after God's own heart? But there was one thing about David. You see, David was a type of guy who after he had 
had sinned against God and God jacked him up and he recognized himself that David would go back to God and he would cry before the Lord and he would not try to commit that sin anymore. David had a shepherd's heart and that's why he could have written in the psalm that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want because a shepherd was writing unto a shepherd so he understood the pathway that a good shepherd would have taken. It was David who was number eight when Jesse in the book of 1 Samuel went to uh, when, when Samuel went to his father's Jesse's house yeah. after Saul had messed up on the throne of God yeah. that when Jesse had all his sons pass before Samuel when God instructed him to go and the Bible said that when all the sons had passed the seven sons of Jesse that Jesse was disappointed because Samuel did not choose Elihud, who was the eldest son, because he was tall and chapter and handsome. Mm -hmm. And he fit the description of a king. Mm -hmm. And so even while Samuel was leaning towards Elihud, God had to remind him that man looks at the outward appearance. Yes. But I, God, look at the heart. Yes. And so Samuel had to say to him, do you have any more sons? And I want to stop here to remind us, Ebenezer, when God gives you a word, even when it doesn't look like it's coming through, even when things are not looking pretty, even when things look like it won't work out, you've got to stand and trust the word of God. Because the word of God is not dependent on how we feel. It's not dependent on our circumstances. It's not dependent on who we are connected to. But the word of God has been established in our lives forever. And we serve a God who the book of Hebrews tells us. It is in two immutable things he can't do. Which is to break a promise or to tell a lie. So when God gives you a word, you want to stand firmly upon the foundation of the word. And even if you're the only person that is standing, you got to be like the Apostle Paul, right into the Ephesian brethren in Ephesians chapter 6. He said, having done all to stand, stand therefore. And so Samuel knew what God said to him. And because he knew what God said to him, he said, do you have any more sons? Because God will not send you someplace by mistake. He will not send you somewhere to disappoint you. And so, Jesse said, the youngest is out in the field. He is ruddy. He is not comely. That means he doesn't look well. He is the smallest of a lot and he's taking care oh. of the sheep. <laughs> oh, the Bible says, and I can just imagine the narrative. They, they didn't have to put it in detail in scripture. But I can just imagine David when they went and called him. That when David came in, he had wool all over him. He smelt like sheep. Uh, at some point in time, he probably stuttered and talked blah, 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 like sheep. Because he was so up on the sheep. He lived the shepherd's life. And one thing about the shepherd is that when you're choosing a shepherd for your sheep in the, that culture and that day, I want us to understand that first the sheep had to be an apprentice, the shepherd had to be an apprentice shepherd. He or he had to come to your place for about two years. And they had to do what? They had to stay with the sheep. So the sheep had to get to know them. They had to sleep at the sheep pastor's door where the, the shed is. They had to go in in the morning and let them out. And in the afternoon, take them back in. Amen. When they went into the pastor, they had to lay with them. Amen. And that's why Jesus said in the book of John that my sheep know my voice and I know they know who I am. Because the shepherd had to have an intimate relationship.
relationship with the sheep. So David, I know, had an intimate relationship. And so the Bible says that David was out on the mountainside before he came in. And one of the things that David did was that while David was out on the mountainside, that he simply started writing to God. How many of us know today that sometimes we don't have the adjectives, we don't have the right words from the English dictionary to simply say to God, but we can simply sit down. Some of us call it a journal. Some of us call it our prayer book. Whatever name or title you want to give to it. But you can simply reach inside your pocketbook or your pocket. Take out your pen. Get a piece of paper. And just start telling God what's on your heart. Psychologists say that sometimes when you have differences with folks. And you're not able to express it verbally. One of the things that you can do is to write them exactly how you are feeling. And so the psalmist David, he wrote love songs to God. He wrote worship to God. And I can just imagine him sitting out there on a rock. The sheep are sleeping and while he's watching over them, the joy that comes in his heart. And he simply starts to tell God how much he loves him. He simply starts to express to God how much he adores him. And so when we read through the Psalms, we see where David is expressing himself to God. In writing, in written form. We get to Psalm 40 and David is saying, I'm waiting patiently for God. When Jesse said to call him, he was just simply waiting on God. When he showed up at the house, the Bible says that when Samuel opened up the horn to pour the oil, the Bible said the oil just begins to flow, flow without measure, flow without hesitation. I want us to understand that when Saul was an anointed king, it wasn't a horn that was opened up to pour out the oil, but it was a flask that was poured upon Saul's head. And there's a difference in the level of anointing when it comes onto the horn and to the flask. The anointing that's poured from the horn, it has a greater weight on the individual compared to the anointing that's poured from the flask itself. And so David had a greater weight of responsibility spiritually and morally before God. So David, when he sinned, when he was in trouble, when his back was against the wall, he turned to God. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined to me and heard my cry. You see, in the process of us waiting for God, it's not just sitting down and waiting like this. Or like this. No, but in the process of waiting, we ought to be worshiping. In the process of waiting, we ought to be working. In the process of waiting, we ought to make sure that we're modeling what God has called us to do. And David said, not only did God incline to me, but he heard my cry. I know some of us in this room today and some of us who are watching us online, there are many times in the dead of night or in the wee hours of the morning that we got up out of our beds. Some of us did not want to get out of the comfort of it because it was a bit cold. But we lay there with our eyes looking up to the ceiling and there was tears coming from our eyes because we were crying out to God. Oh God, how long? Will this happen? Oh God, what am I supposed to do? God, I need your direction. We were just crying out to him. And for some of us, tears were not coming from our eyes. But our heart was crying. 
crying out to God. And if we can be honest with ourselves and testify, like David, he inclined to us and he heard our cry. Uh, Here is what David said in Psalm 40 verse 2. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet on a rock to stay. He established my steps. Some of us have gone through hell and high water. Some of us have gone through some betrayals and disappointments. Some of us have gone through some sicknesses, and we never think we would have come out of it. Oh my goodness, Master, when you were in the hospital, the only person you could cry to was the God. Your wife couldn't help you. I couldn't help you. Family couldn't help you. But when you cried out to Jehovah, you said, oh my God, hear my cry. Oh my God, answer me. And he inclined his ears. And you're standing here today. Hallelujah. 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 You see, crying is a good thing. But crying can also be a bad thing. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that the Lord has bottled up the tears of the saints and he's going to pour out the vial of their prayers on the earth. Uh, but crying in itself can be good and crying can be bad. In the book of Genesis chapter 39, verse 12 to verse 18, there is a particular scripture that talks about a cry. The Bible says that while Joseph was in the house of Potiphar, yes. that Joseph Potiphar's wife simply tried to sexually harass him. Yes. And the Bible says in the process of time, this young man ran out of her presence and simply left his coat in her hands because she held on to him. And Joseph said, I cannot do this great sin against my God and wickedness against God. How can I do that? But the Bible says that after the cold came off in her hand, this the, the woman of deception simply sat by her bedchamber. And the Bible says that she cried out to the men of the house and said the uncircumcised Israelite that you brought in unto us to defy me and to disgrace us. The Bible says, Pastor, that she cried until the evening, until her husband got home. And when Potiphar got home, he had trusted Joseph. And when he found out what his wife said and saw the tears coming from her, the Bible said he was so mad, he threw him into the dungeon of the king. Every cry is not a good cry. Oh, the Bible tells us in the book of Luke 23, verse 18 through 25. I know it's not Easter, but when Pilate had the option and he had the great privilege to release Jesus, the Bible says he went to the crowd. I preached some weeks ago that the crowd is not always good. Sometimes you've got to travel alone. Sometimes you've got to get into an isolated mode and just be by yourself because the crowd will let you down. The crowd is like a helium in a balloon. It will blow you up one minute and it will deflate you the next. You gotta be careful of the crowd. Because it was a crowd. It was a church. Oh, it was a religious people of the day that simply egged on the crowd to say crucify him. The Bible says that when Pilate came out and said, who do you want me to release? Jesus of Nazareth or Barabbas the thief and murderer? They said, give us Barabbas. And Pilate simply said to them, and I'm paraphrasing, but this man killed your children. This man robbed your home. This man destroyed your daughters. This man killed your sons. This man destroyed your livelihood. This man is no good. But if you read the word of God, it tells you that the cry from the crowd got louder. And they said, give us Barabbas. Give us the murderer. Give us the thief. Give us the rapist. Give us the drug pusher. Give us the gangster. And so today in our society, 
And they have so many of that running rampage and because instead of begging for the Son of God, instead of crying out for Jesus, the people cried out for the murderer. They cried out for the thief. They cried out for the rapist. They cried out for the gangster. They cried out for the terrorist. I want to look around us today in the news and all over. It's the same thing that they cried out for, but they have come. Not every cry is a good cry. Some are deceptive and some are violent. So the Bible says, Pilate says, what must I do or should I do with Jesus? <laughs> oh, glory to God. The Bible says the crowd cried out the more and the louder they got to the height. You see, when we talk about volumes, you ever drive past someone or you're on your porch or you're somewhere and you hear a car driving by and the music sounds like it's, 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 he's, he or she is entertaining the entire neighborhood because they have turned, the, the, the thing about volumes and a pastor can tell you is that with volumes and with electronics, there's a thing called decibels. And the higher the decibel, like the volume, yes. is the higher the sound. Yes. That's right. Come on. The doctor will tell you that you have to regulate the sound from your earpiece yes. or the sound that goes into your ears. Why? Because if it's too loud, it destroys the drums in your ears, yes. right. making you eventually deaf yes. early or present or later on in life. Yeah, that's right. That's true. But on this day in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. the Bible says that the people increased the decibels of their voice and sound. And they simply cried louder, crucify him, crucify him. As a matter of fact, the people said, let his blood be upon us and our children's children. you got to be careful of the cries that you're drawn to. you got to be careful of who is crying unto you. you got to be careful of who cries to you. The book of Samuel, first, the book of uh, 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 Judges, chapter 16, talks about Samson and Delilah. And the Bible says, the Lord had me read it this week, and the Bible says that Delilah cried unto Samson. Yes, exactly. Cried unto him. What is the source of your strength? And you know, while I was reading the scriptures and in preparation for today, I said to myself, I said, God, Samson must have been a fool. Because this woman, it was one day she asked him. And I know the Bible is not written in one day, like day one, day two, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's over a period of time the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, inspired men. Yes, yes men wrote the Bible under the inspiration Amen. of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's true. Because I know some people are debating and arguing about men wrote the Bible and, you know, this person wrote this book. Men wrote it under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Right. And so, this man, day after day, this woman persisted with one question. What is the source of your strength? And she cried unto him, the Bible says. The last thing he said to her was that if you bound me with new ropes that have never been used, before he spoke to her about his hair, then my strength will be gone. I mean, as weak as any other man. But there was a consistency I realized in Samson's, in Delilah's crying unto Samson. Every time she cried, the Philistines, she also cried, the Philistines are up on you. Be careful of people who cry to you. And what they are crying to you about. Be careful. Because some cries 
are not just violent. Some cries are not just for self-pity, but some cries are destructive and deceptive. When a baby cries, either the baby is wet, the baby is hungry, the baby is irritated, or the baby wants to sleep. Now, sometimes as parents, we spoil them, Pastor, to the point where they will cry for nothing. We spoil them to the point that we will cry for nothing. But I'm so glad that we serve a God who hears our cry. I'm so glad that we serve a God who knows what our cries are. I'm so glad that we serve a God who is simply attend to our cry. I want to talk about the cry that God hears today real quick. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 16, where God is revealed as El Rohi, the God who sees, was because when Hagar was in the wilderness with her son Ishmael, when they were in the heat of the sun, the scripture says that God, they were about to die. And the Bible says that Hagar cried out to God. There is a cry of desperation that you can give to God. There's a cry when you're just on the edge that you can say, God, if you don't come like F.C. Barnes, the late Reverend F.C. Barnes says, I'm standing down here by the river, Lord Jesus. Satan don't want me to cross. If you don't come to my rescue, I will be lost. And there is a cry of desperation. There is a cry of salvation. Listen, Hagar was not the only one who needed saving in Genesis 16. But when we look out on the book of Acts chapter 2, after Peter had spoken to the men and the brethren who were in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that after Peter, who was an unlearned man, just a fisherman by trade, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, stood up. And after he stood up, and he preached to them, and he said that Jesus, whom you have crucified, is still exalted this day, that the parts were pricked. And they looked at him and said, men and women, what shall we do? And Peter said, repent of your sins. Amen. There is a cry of salvation. Yeah. Acts 2, verse 36 to 42. They cried out. The Bible says on that day, over 3,000 souls were saved. That's right. So there's a cry of salvation. And God saved Hagar. He saved Ishmael. He saved the men on Pentecost. Before you got to where you are right now and sitting or watching or listening, if you are saved and in Christ, there was a day when you had to cry out to God. Salvation came to your house because you cried out to him. I've heard of people crying out in the shower. People testify they cried out in their cars. Some people said they were on the bus or the train. But there had to be a cry. A sound had to be made. They had to grab God's attention. Yes. 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 That's true. When babies cry, they grab the attention of their parents or guardians. Yes. And sometimes we don't physically hear it from their lips. But we have what is called a, a, a monitor or a baby monitor in the house. Watch it. My God, the baby monitors all over the world for us in the angel of God yeah. through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. They are placed in strategic places so that when we cry, God himself will hear. Amen. Amen. Praise yes. the Lord. A cry of salvation. Jesus mm. cried out. Oh God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Joseph cried out. Yeah. Uh -huh. Joseph cried in the pit to God. The Bible says that he cried out to God. It was a pit of decision. And a cry had to be made uh -huh. in order for God to hear him for deliverance to come. Here's what David said in Psalm. 
40 verse 2. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet on a rock to stay and establish my steps. Amen. This couldn't have been more true of Joseph when his brothers envied him and connived and deceived and concocted a plan and put him in a pit. Oh, and I believe that young Joseph at the age of 16 and a half, 17 years old, in a dry pit that could have been filled with water just about any time. I didn't even know if Joseph could swim. But the Bible says that while he was in the pit, and I know it doesn't write this detail in the scriptures of Genesis chapter 39, but the Bible simply says that Joseph cried out to God. There had to be a cry. When we're in dry places like a pit, we ought to cry out to God. When we can look up and barely see the light of day, when we're in the bottom of the well, we ought to cry out to God. Oh, when it feels dry and nasty and dirty around us, and we can't turn left or right because we feel trapped in the pit, we ought to cry out to God. And this cry doesn't mean it always has to be for help. It could be just a cry of praise. But God, I'm feeling down today. Or my body is sick, but in spite of the pain, I'm going to praise you anyhow. Amen. So Joseph cried out to God. Joseph cried more than one time. He was in the prison after Potiphar's wife. And he had to cry out to God. Because sometimes we gotta cry out because of rejection and neglect. The cup bearer who was restored after Joseph interpreted his dream to Pharaoh's cup bearer position forgot Joseph for two years in the prison. Don't forget me. How many people have been forgotten? By people you trusted would have spoken a word for you. How many people have been forgotten and rejected by people you trusted would have had your back after you did all of that for them? And you did not do it because you wanted returns from them. You did it because of the goodness of your heart and what God has put inside of you. And the people who promised you that they would be there forgot you. But I come to tell somebody today that the God we serve is not a God of amnesia. He doesn't have dementia or Alzheimer's. He's not a God of a short memory. But he is a God who will remember you at all times. David said that this poor man cried. And the Lord heard him. Amen. And delivered him out of all his troubles. Amen. Jonah cried out of the belly of a whale. Uh, he was running from God. And too many of us are running from God. And when we finally get in trouble, the same God that we're running from is the same God we're going to cry to. Yes. And you know the beauty about it? He will deliver us. Amen. He loves us so much. The book of 1 Peter said, 3 verse 9, he said, God is not sack concerning his promise as some men count sackness. Mm -hmm. It is not his will that we should perish, no. but that we should all come to eternal life. Amen. Amen. God will not forget you, no. and he will hear your cry. Amen. Sometimes it's a cry of praise. Yes. You just got to say, Jesus! Have mercy. Have mercy. Just ask blind Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. He cried out the more. And sometimes when people want to shut your praise down, sometimes people want to shut your worship down, or you just got to cry out because you know the hell that God took you from. You know where you were broken and God fixed you. You know what you were going through and God elevated you. You can't let nobody shut your praise down, but you got to cry out. To him in worship. Amen. After all that you have been through, you gotta cry out in worship. Mary Magdalene, she cried out in sorrow. 
The Bible says in Luke chapter 7, verse 36 through 50, it talks about her story. A woman of the night who was broken. And so she didn't just cry out. But mother, she, her heart didn't just break. But her alabaster box broke. Jesus. Not just her heart, but her alabaster box. The most precious thing that she had. Broke before God and tears running down her face. And the Bible says, it didn't just break, but she took Jesus' feet and she washed them with her tears. How many of us have gotten to the place where we are simply at the feet of Jesus and we are washing, washing the floor, washing the feet of the king, washing the feet of the master, just crying out to him. We don't even know what to say. But our heart is so broken before him that the tears are running down. We don't even know what words to utter. But the worship and the praise and the awesomeness of his presence is so, we are so in awe that we are just washing his feet because we are paying obedience and we are worshiping the king. Broken before him. And if more of us will just get broken in his presence, washing his feet in worship and tears from a broken, a contrite heart, yes, yes. then he will be glorified in our lives. Yes, yes. And so Mary Magdalene broke before God, worshiping with a cry. Oh, the Bible says also in John chapter 20, that she was the first one at the tomb. Verse 11 through 28. She was the first one at the tomb. And when she saw Jesus. Jesus said she thought he was a gardener. And when she asked what did you do with my savior. And Jesus said Mary. There's something about when Jesus calls our name. There's a difference when he speaks our name. The Bible says Mary broke down and she was in tears before the Father. And she said, Rabbi, which means master. In tears, she cried before God. And then Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God. The Bible tells us in the book of John 11 when Jesus heard that Lazarus had died. The Bible says Jesus wept. John 11, 38, I believe it is. The Bible says the shortest verse in the scriptures. Jesus wept. So even our Lord had to cry. Even our Savior had to cry out. The Bible tells us in Luke 19 that Jesus wept over Jerusalem. How long? Oh yeah. That's deep. He wept over Jerusalem. You know, when I was a child, I usually heard from my grandmother, and I usually heard in my in my household that let your mom never cry over you as a child. Don't ever let them shed tears over you because of your behavior as a child. That's not something you want to follow you in your life. It's a curse. It's a curse. And so, Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Jesus weeps over us when we walk in sin. He weeps over us when we're in disobedience. He weeps over us when we fall. He weeps over us when we reject him. That's right. He weeps over us. Hallelujah. And lastly, in Matthew 27, verse 46, the Bible says that when Jesus was dying on the cross, he cried out to his father. He cried out to him, and here's what he said. The Bible says, verse 45, now the sixth hour, or the three, three o'clock in the day, until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, 
Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? If Jesus could have cried to God in agony for our sins, how about us crying out to him for what we need? Amen. God hears your cry. I go back to Genesis 16 and we're going to close. It was when Hagar cried out to God, thought that she was abandoned and forsaken. She has been rejected. She, has, she was in the wilderness, a dry, dirty, dusty place. Mm -hmm. And some of us in our lives, we have found ourselves in that location mm -hmm. where we're in a dry place like nothing is moving. Mm -hmm. We're in a dusty place like we can't even see what the goal ahead is because everything is so fuzzy and blurry. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're in a desperate and alone place mm -hmm. like nobody cares. Mm -hmm. Even though people are around us, they don't understand what we're going through. The Bible says that she cried out to God. And when she cried out to God, she experienced God to be El Rohai or Jehovah Rohai. And the word Rohai means he sees. And just as Jesus cried out in Matthew 27, 46, over 2,023 biblical years ago on the cross, he saw us. Yes. He saw our pain. He saw our distress. He saw what we would have gone through. And I love the songwriter that uh, penned the song. While he was on the cross, you and I were on his mind. He knew me. He loved me. He whose glory makes the heaven shine. I'm so unworthy of such mercy. But while he was on the cross, I, you, we were on his mind. And that's why he cried out to his father in agony, bearing our sins, bearing our shame, bearing our guilt, bearing our pain, and saying, why have you forsaken me? It was for us. Stand with me. It was for all of us. Today, I don't know what your cry is. You may not even have come into this house with tears down your cheek, but in your heart, you're crying out. Crying out for salvation for your loved one. Crying out for breakthrough from what you're going through. Crying out for deliverance. Crying out to be loved. There are people who are crying out to be heard. Crying out to be seen. Crying out for help. And I want to say to you today, El Rohai sees you. He hears you. And he will attend to your cry. Will someone say today, if you are here today and you are crying out, you have a cry of your heart. You want God to work something out for you. You're crying out to God to fix it. The altar is open. We want to pray for you. We want to pray with you. And we want to encourage you that God hears your cry. Hallelujah. If you will come, we will pray for you. We'll pray with you. We will cry with you because God is able. Mm -hmm. He did it for David. David said, he heard me. He inclined his ear and heard me. You maybe have been working on something and you can't see your way through or there have been obstacles or hindrances. The water is troubled. The altar is open. And God is saying, I hear you and I see you. Hallelujah. If you are watching with us today, if you are tuning in, if you are here in the sanctuary and you have a need, the altar is open. If you are crying out for salvation, Book of Titus chapter 2 verse 11 tells us the grace of God has appeared unto all men mm -hmm. teaching us that we should deny ungodliness and worldly lust and to live righteously and soberly in this present age and world. John 3.16 says for God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. Salvation is here for you. God is saying, I can dry those tears and I can provide salvation for you. We want to pray for you today. We want to pray with you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the altar is open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. God, we bless you today. We honor you today, God. You hear every cry of our hearts. God, you hear. I want to ask the ministers to come. You hear, God, what we're going through. And some of us are sitting in silence because we don't want to tell our neighbor. We don't want to tell our friends. We don't want to tell our loved ones. We're afraid of the backlash or we're afraid of the response or the criticism. God, we're afraid, God, that they will not take it well and that their, their responses will not be favorable towards us. God, some of us are crying in our rooms. Some of us are crying in the midnight hour. Oh, God, because we need breakthrough and we need deliverance. And God, as we come before you this afternoon, you are saying in your word that you have heard our cry. You have in clear, inclined your ear. That means you have put your ear down to hear us. Yes, Father. And you will answer. And today, as they stand at the altar, God, as they stand at the congregation, as they are watching online or listening, I pray today, Father, that you will touch God, that you will soothe the broken heart. God, we pray today, God, that you will uplift. And God, that you will tear down the barriers that simply have stalled your people. Or oh God, they feel disappointed or dismayed. But we pray right now, Father, that as you hear their cry, that it will come up to your ears. And that, God, that you will redeem them. You will reconcile. You will give breakthrough. God, you will save them today. Let them know that there's nothing too hard for you. You ask Abraham in Genesis 18, is there anything too hard for God? God, there is nothing that you can't do. And God, today you said in your word, there is nothing impossible for you. And today as they cry out to you, Father, they will cry out to man and man will not hear them. They will cry out to man and they will hear and ignore them. But today we ask that you will move the barriers. Oh God, move the obstacles. God, move the hardness of the heart. Move, oh God, the mental blockage. And we ask in the name of Jesus today that God, that you will pour out, that you will redeem them. As David said, this poor man cried and you heard him. Hear them today. Hear their cry. Hear their calling. Hear, oh God, their emotions on the inside. See their tears, God. And we pray that you will wrap your arms around them and grant comfort, grant healing, grant salvation, grant deliverance in the name of Jesus and breakthrough. God, see their needs. And your word that you promised to supply according to your riches and glory. And so we ask God, there are some who are crying for revival. There are some who are crying for restoration. There are some who are crying for reconciliation. There are some who are crying for forgiveness. God, today hear them and grant them, Father, a refreshing. Grant them forgiveness because it is provided for them. They just have to receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody says, hear my cry, O Lord, and attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth, when I cry unto you, God, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead them to the rock that is higher than they are. Lead them out of the drugs. Lead them, O oh God, out of the prostitution. Lead them, O oh God, out of their own ways. Lead them out of their own devices and lead them to you as they cry. Give them a testimony of deliverance. Give them a testimony of breakthrough. And let them know that you're still in the miracle working business. You're still in the salvation business. And you still answer cries as you did for David. God, we bless you today. We give you glory. God, we give you honor and praise. And we lift you up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Can we just shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph? Can we just shout unto the Lord with a voice of praise today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. And we thank you today. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. God hears your cry. And your cry is not something that you may have shared with anybody. You may have shared with others and they're praying for you or praying about it. But God sees the depth of your cry. He sees the urgency of your cry. He sees you. When you feel alone, he sees you. When you think nobody is there, he sees you. And we have to trust him to deliver. If you trust him, he will deliver. We are trusting him on your behalf. We're believing God for you. But you know the thing about it? Here's what, God, here's what David said. Because sometimes we, we want it right away. Sometimes we want it to work out because of how we're feeling. And I understand that. But here's what David says. Go back. When you go home, read Psalm 40 again. Here's the first thing that David says in line one. I waited patiently. He was crying. I waited patiently. And he inclined. That word inclined means he listened. He leaned in. He paid attention and heard my cry. My brother, he hears your cry. My sister, he hears your cry. If you're watching us today or listening, he hears your cry. Wait for him. Wait on him. It may seem like it's long because of your circumstance. It may seem like it's long because of what you desire from God. But he is going to come through. I'm a testimony of it. We're testimonies here. And if you look back in your life, if we look back in our lives, we can see where we waited and God showed up. Every, listen, here's what the enemy does. And I'm closing. The enemy makes every situation, makes it look like it's a situation of urgency. And I'm not saying that it doesn't need to be attended to. It does. But God knows what he's doing. And as you cry, he hears and he will answer. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's just praise God for them today. Hallelujah. You may go back to your sins. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He hears our cry. Psalm 40 tells us he hears your cries. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray that you'll have a blessed week this week. Remember on Wednesday we have our Bible studies at 7 p.m. Looking forward for you to join us for a refresh and refocus Bible studies. This Friday, every Friday we have our fasting Fridays. Every second and fourth Friday we have our fasting, not only fasting, but we have prayer meeting at 7 p.m. And we also have our youth service at 7 p.m. Bring your young people out this this Friday is going to be a grand time. The 24th, you will announce earlier. We want your young people to come out. We'll have food and games and refreshment for them. And we'll have the word of God also. Yes. And while the youth are downstairs and they're being poured into, we're going to be upstairs here in prayer. And we're going to be praying for them. If there's ever a time that our young people need prayer, it is now. If there's ever a time that we need to cover them, it is now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us stand for the benediction. Now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God amen. bless you. Amen. Have a blessed week. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching our service. If this is your first time connecting with us, please take a moment to subscribe to this YouTube channel and also to follow us on Facebook. We hope that you were blessed by today's message. If at the end of today's viewing, you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, we would love to connect with you by having you email us at ebenezerfwccog at gmail.com. We are located at 35 Garden Street in Mount Holly, New Jersey, 08060. Or you may call us at 609-283-6798. If no one is available to take your call, please 
leave a voice message and someone will return your call. If you would like to be a blessing to this ministry, you may donate through Cash App at dollar sign Ebenezer FWC COG or you may write a check to Ebenezer Family Worship Center COG and mail it to 90 Beechnut Court, Lumberton, New Jersey 08048. We invite you to join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for refresh and refocus Bible studies and prayer. Join us here in person or via phone line toll free at 669-275-1668. God bless you.